Hey everyone and welcome to Puffin Storytime. I'm Yasmin Abdin Majid and today I'll be reading a couple of chapters from my book You Must Be Layla. You Must Be Layla, chapter one. Gah, this skirt is the worst, Layla muttered to herself as she studied the mirror on the back of her wooden bedroom door. Biting her lip, she tucked the cream shirt into her maroon skirt, untucked it and then tucked it back in again, weighing up which option was less ridiculous. O-M-G, nothing was working. How was she supposed to make any friends at this new school when her uniform made her look like a nun? Layla squinted at her reflection, her bushy black eyebrows furrowing together. She wasn't even like one of those dope singing nuns from the movie Sister Act 2. No, in this uniform, she looked like a mean old lady who realised marrying God meant there was nobody around to help do the dishes. Oh, happy day, Layla started humming, distracting herself with the thought of the famous gospel tune. The 13-year-old loved singing, even though her older brother, Ozzy, always said she sounded like a choking chimpanzee. He doesn't appreciate my talent, Layla giggled to herself. Deciding to go with the shirt tucked in, she turned her attention to the next challenge, her headscarf. It was a shiny polyester maroon piece made to match the burgundy skirt of the school uniform. The sheer polyester was lined with a slightly darker ribbon, giving it a formal look. Layla styled it in the traditional Sudanese way. The rectangle scarf wrapped around her head, covering her braids, ears and neck and leaving her face neatly framed in a smooth oval. The scarf was secured in place using a couple of maroon pins, new and brightly bejeweled. Layla loved jewellery making and she had been undeniably the best bejeweler in her class last year. But that was at her old school. She wondered what the kids she would meet on her first day of year eight would think of her work with scarf pins. Feeling good about the situation, Layla stepped back to suss out her handiwork in the reflection. Hmm, not quite. She scowled, despite what she thought was foolproof wrapping, a couple of tight black curls had escaped from underneath the scarf, ruining the whole formal and neat vibe. Tugging, Layla tried to adjust the hijab, but the silky material slipped back over her braids, exposing her entire hairline. Her afro hair was rarely ever well behaved, and today was no exception. OMG hair come on! Today is an important day! She mentally scolded the rebellious curls. Stay put and behave, okay? Talking to her hair always worked. Layla pulled the scarf forward to cover her hairline again. Patting her head, then brushing her hands down the front of her shirt, Layla smiled inwardly. You got this, she told herself, and almost completely believed it. Layla, where are you? We're going to be late. Baba yelled at her from downstairs. Judging by the clattering, her dad was in the kitchen cleaning up after breakfast. Layla hoped he'd packed something delicious for lunch. She was going to need all the energy she could get. Today was special because it was the first day of school after the summer break. Deep breath, she told herself in the voice of an aerobics instructor. Breathe in and out, in and out. You got this, girl. She was nervous because today wasn't just any first day of school. It was the first day of her new school. And that wasn't the only reason her knees were quivering under her pleated maroon skirt. Layla was starting at a fancy new school on the other side of town where she didn't know a single soul. Dun dun dun, what happens next? Now we're gonna hear chapter three. <clears throat> Layla! Baba bellowed again from downstairs. She heard the car engine start. I'm going to leave without you. Oh no, Layla threw the straw hat on her bed. It wasn't going to fit on her headscarf and who wears hats anyway? She grabbed the backpack, stumbled clumsily over her skirt as she ran down the stairs and into the kitchen to get her lunchbox. And then she bolted into the garage just as her dad was pulling out, almost tripping over the shoes at the front of the door. Wait! Ozzy was sitting in the front seat, laughing as she opened the back door of the car and clambered in. We were gonna leave you, he sang with glee. Ugh, 
Ozzy was so annoying. He was in year 11, but Layla swore he acted like a two-year-old most of the time. Her eldest brother looked most like Baba. Lean body, light brown skin, spongy black hair, strong jawline. But he was going to be much taller. He was already as tall as their dad. The height came from their mother's genes, as Fadia often reminded them. Layla shot her older brother a dirty look, then slammed the door of the white Camry hard. Layla jumped and she chuckled. Serves him right. Her younger brothers, though, were not so pleased. Sammy and Yusuf were being crushed by her backpack and were squealing with annoyance. Layla, you're squishing me, Sammy groaned. The bag was heavy with her new textbooks, so he was not totally out of line. The twins looked like stretched toddlers, gangly limbs, huge dark brown eyes, and the signature Hussein curls that Thadia kept trimmed short. Yan Harabiyad, Layla muttered under her breath, using a curse word that only grandmothers used, and shifted the bag onto her lap. Comfortable, she turned to the window, feeling the air on her face and through her headscarf as the Hussein crew backed out of the garage and sped off. Layla was the last one in the car after Ozzy and the twins had been dropped off at ISB, their school, in the next suburb. This new school was half an hour away, out of the suburbs and set amongst the hills and high rises of the inner city. Barbara pulled over at the gate and parked in the crowded bay area out the front of the school. Young Hariswit, she whispered, using another curse word reserved for grandmothers. She liked using curse words that were a little unusual. It felt like her own secret language. The place was really out of control. It was dark when they'd last visited, so Layla hadn't seen the school in its full glory in the sunlight, though. Whoa! The buildings behind the tall gate were like something out of a Harry Potter movie. Sandstone with huge glass windows. The front entry looked like the actual stairway to heaven. Layla could see the large green oval in the distance. ISB, with its temporary feeling shipping container rooms and nothing over one story tall, looked like a children's playground compared to this place. Good luck today, Layla, Barbara called from the driver's seat. Do your best. Show them how smart the Hussein family is. Try not to get into trouble. <laughs> Layla chuckled as she waved at the car, then turned to the front gate and took in a huge, deep breath. You got this, she told herself again as she adjusted her backpack and walked through the gates. Kids milled around her, excitedly chatting about their holidays. Ooh, she heard one girl screech to another, look at your hair. Oh man, you look like you've been working out, a deeper voice behind her said, and what Layla assumed was a conversation between two rugby players. OMG, Sarah totally hooked up with that boy from the party. He is so fine. Layla had no idea what everyone was talking about, but she knew she'd figure it out. That's what made adventures fun. Walking through the throngs of students, she felt a hush falling around her as she passed groups of people. Layla's eyes darted from side to side, not wanting to draw any extra attention to herself, but it was too late. The eyes of hundreds of curious, hostile and confused kids and some parents and teachers followed her down the path as she walked towards the largest structure she could see. She approached what appeared to be the main reception building to ask for directions. Walking up the path, she clocked three girls standing in front of the glass doors and gulped. Please don't notice me, she prayed, eyes shut tight for a short moment. Allah, help a sister out. The girls were skinny and pretty, and gosh, did they know it. Their shiny blonde hair gleamed, and their school skirts looked way too short to be regulation. And wow, those legs, how are they so smooth and shiny? Layla was glad that her brown hairy legs were covered by the skirt. Even looking at these girls made Layla feel uncool. She glanced down as she walked past the group and towards the door. Layla concentrated on her shoes, one step in front of the other. Slam! A loud bang interrupted her. Oh! Looking down meant Layla hadn't quite seen the door. She had walked right into the glass pane. Her head throbbed as the entire door shook and the three girls nearby whipped around to stare at Layla. 
their perfect noses delicately scrunched in mocking laughter. Leila shook her head and stared straight ahead, desperately trying to pretend that nothing had happened. The beautiful girls weren't going to let her get off that easily, though. Ha! Watch where you're going, you freak! Who are you anyway? The tallest girl spat out, her words hitting Layla like shards. One of the other girls good-naturedly pushed her friend on the shoulder. Don't be so mean, Veronica. Leave the poor refugee girl alone. She looks terrified. They laughed and turned away, forgetting the new student almost instantly. Layla shook her head, looked at the sky, and muttered to her god, Ya Allah, where were you, mate? Rah! MMGS was going to be some hard work. Want to hear some more? <laughs> it took Layla forever to find her new classroom. She was in 8A. A for awesome, she had said to herself when she found out, chuckling a little, the door incident forgotten. She had sung a little hype up tune to make herself feel better, and her jokes did the same, working their magic on her mood. She could make herself laugh for ages with her lame jokes, which had earned her the nickname Broken Record at her old school ISB. Layla wondered if her classmates here would think she was funny. Humming, Layla threw her school bag on the rack outside her classroom. The bulging maroon backpack lay precariously on top of the untidy pile of identical bags. She then pushed the door and walked into the classroom. The room fell silent and everyone turned to look at her. The humming caught in her throat and she paused just inside the doorway, wondering if she had done something wrong again. Was it because she'd forgotten the hat? Damn it. Or had class already started? The clock on the wall said 8.40. Ra, how long had she been lost for? Ah, come on in. You must be Layla. Now that everyone's here, we can finally get started, Layla. Would you like to take a seat? The thin voice came from the front of the room. Everyone turned to look at their teacher. At first, Layla couldn't tell if the teacher was friendly or annoyed, though her narrowing eyes were giving it away. A moment later, everyone turned to look back at Layla. It was almost like a tennis match. The woman standing at the front of the classroom had a scarily wrinkled face, a little like a prune. Her eyes were beady, framed by trendy cat eye glasses. Her nose were painted in a shockingly bright pink, which popped against her pale skin. She had broad shoulders with very thin legs, with straight white hair that was pulled up in a tight, tight bun. Layla wondered if the hairstyle gave her headaches. Sometimes when she tied her headscarf too tight, it gave her these wicked migraines. Ahem. The teacher made another noise, startling Layla out of her thoughts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Layla croaked. She cleared her throat. She could do better than this. <clears throat> Yo, I'm Layla, she yelled. Oh, too loud. Why weren't her vocal cords cooperating today? A couple of people snickered. Sorry for yelling, miss, she said. I just wanted to make sure you could hear me. I've, I've had a weird morning, you know. I ran into a door. Anyway, Layla took in a deep breath. <sighs> when she was flustered, she could ramble. What was she even saying? Oh yes, she should apologize for yelling. Well, you see, sorry for yelling because like, well, oh, think of an excuse quick. I have to yell at my grandma when I'm on the phone with her because she's a bit deaf and you kind of remind me of my grandma. So I thought I should yell just in case. I was just being polite, you know? The class erupted with laughter. Oh no. I don't, I mean, I don't think, I don't mean you're old, miss. I mean to say, like, my grandma's really wise and kind, you know. The teacher's face was darkening with anger, and Layla slowly spluttered to a stop. As the class continued to roar, Layla grimaced. She'd really put her foot in it, making fun of the teacher straight away. What had gotten into her? She was usually pretty good at talking to adults, even if they didn't like her. But maybe it was the nerves? Like, she knew that sometimes her hijab made old people act weird around her. Even people on the street stared at her a bit. But she usually knew how to handle it. Maybe she really had hit her head hard on that door. Jamie Mack! 
Layla muttered an old Irish saying under her breath. Another word she'd learned to use instead of swearing. Why did she let her mouth run off like that? This was such a disaster. But maybe she could fix it. Oh, miss, I'm so sorry. I meant no disrespect. You're really beautiful for an elderly woman. Elderly woman? Janie Mack! Layla, what has gotten into you? Layla couldn't believe the words coming out of her mouth. The teacher's brown, beady eyes had narrowed together. Her pink lips had been pressing tighter and tighter. You could barely see them anymore. They were just two pink lines underneath a flat nose. And with this final sentence from Layla, the teacher snapped. Layla! This is completely unacceptable. I beg your pardon. We will not have any of that disrespectful attitude in this school. Thank you very much. I don't care where you've come from, but rest assured, behavior like that won't be acceptable here. Where I've come from? Layla paused. What did she mean? You mean like from my mother? The class laughed louder and Layla smiled uncertainly. She didn't even think it was a good joke, really. Ah, oh, well, she might have got off on the wrong foot with the teacher, but at least the classmates knew she was funny. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna get out of deciding to move out of the line of fire. Layla scrambled to find a spare seat, glancing around the class, trying to make eye contact with someone, anyone, for permission. A girl with blonde, frizzy hair smiled at Layla cautiously, but there were no spare seats around her. Layla finally spotted one right at the back of the class and made her way to the last available seat in 8A, squeezing into a plastic chair in the corner. There were two boys on either side of her. I'm Ethan, said one, his greeny hazel eyes piercing Layla's soul. <laughs> Layla felt her heart skip a beat, maybe two and a breath caught in her throat. Who is this guy? Then I'm Seb, said the other, before she could respond. Seb looked Latino with overgrown dark wavy hair that covered his eyes. Layla nodded at them both as she settled into her seat and pulled out her laptop. That was pretty funny, the way you shut Miss Taylor down, Ethan said, and after a few moments of silence, Seb nodded. Nice one, hey. Both boys put their hands up for a high five and Layla hit both of them at the same time before winking. She thought Ethan was kind of cute. Red hair, crooked teeth and freckles. School might be all right after all. Layla, the teacher yelled from the front of the class, eyes to the front. If I get any more rude behavior from you, I will be contacting your parents. Layla was startled by the threat. Maybe, but maybe she could get away with one more joke. This one, always went down so well at her old school. Hey miss, is it cause I'm black? Miss Taylor's face looked like she was going to explode. Out, get out now. And that's all from me, Yasmin Abdul Majid, for this Puffin Storytime. If you want to read more, you'll have to get a copy of You Must Be Layla 